Buffalo.
All rise. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. The Supreme Court of Florida is now in ceremonial session. All way up calls to plead, draw near, give attention, and you shall be heard. God save these United States, the great state of Florida, and this honorable court. Ladies and gentlemen, Supreme Court of Florida. Thank you. Welcome to the Florida Supreme Court. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation. For the pledge, it's my great honor uh, to recognize that we will be led by Justice Grosshand's children, Avery, Jack, and Alice. They are accompanied by Justice Grosshand's uncle, retired U.S. Air Force Colonel Ronald Rutland. Thank you. I now ask Dr. Spencer Mooney, a longtime friend and mentor to Justice Grosshands, to come to the podium and offer the invocation. Distinguished friends and guests, members of the court, it is an honor for my wife Janie and I to be here today to honor Justice Grosshands. We've had the privilege of knowing her since her childhood and I was actually her first employer. Since her early childhood years, she has displayed great character, intellect, determination, discernment, powers of logic, and even a nascent gift for argumentation. <laughs> she has equally displayed a remarkable capacity for kindness, compassion, and love, and I'm sure that some of her friends will further testify to that today. It has been a privilege for us as her uh, friends to see God's providence and his great faithfulness unfold in her life. So now please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise you for the joy of being able to call upon your name on this occasion. We thank you for your beautiful creation, for the gift of our lives, for this nation, for this state, for our form of government. We ask your blessings on its leaders and citizens. Specifically today, Lord, we would lift up to you Justice Grosshands and her husband Josh, and their children Avery, Jack, and Alice. <clears throat> we ask you for their safety and travel, for their peace and well-being as she serves the people of Florida and this Supreme Court. We ask for your guidance for her as she seeks to comprehend and interpret and apply the laws of this land. We ask for you to give her the strength that comes from humility, the energy that flows from conviction, the clarity of mind that springs from a pure heart, and the true wisdom that only you, O Lord, can give. We ask now your blessings on this ceremony today and on her service for years to come. Amen. Thank you very much, Dr. Mooney. Please remain standing now as we will hear from friends Jarian Felton and Shauna Felton who will sing America the Beautiful.
Thank you both for that wonderful performance. We may now all be seated. Investitures are at once celebrations and solemn events. They are both a reminder of the Supreme Court's past and a harbinger of its future. Today we hold an investiture for Justice Jamie R. Grosshands, our dear friend, and colleague. This represents the 91st installation of a new justice since the court was first convened 175 years ago. It is my privilege to join all of you in welcoming Justice Grosshands on this formal occasion. I am also heartened to celebrate this investiture in person uh, more than a year following her appointment. Uh, as you know, it's an unavoidable delay caused by the pandemic, but it is so wonderful to be in this courtroom filled with so many uh, friends of Justice Grosshands and her family. Today, Jamie R. Grosshands takes her place on the highest court in the state after serving as a lawyer in private practice, an assistant state attorney, an Orange County court judge, and a judge of the Fifth District Court of Appeal. Justice Grosshands takes her place among the jurists who have had the privilege to serve on the Florida Supreme Court, including those who serve today and all those who have served before. We will shortly hear from Governor Ron DeSantis who appointed Justice Grosshands. We are also honored by the presence of our Lieutenant Governor, Jeanette Nunez, who will soon be presenting the credentials commissioning Justice Grosshands. We are very pleased to welcome other members of the Florida Executive Branch as well as members of the Florida Legislature. We extend a special welcome also to members of the Supreme Court Judicial nominating commission who played some role in today's events. Also joining us are many judges of Florida's county, circuit, and district courts along with members of the federal judiciary. We also have present for today's celebration a large contingent of honored guests from Orlando, elsewhere in central Florida, and other regions throughout the state. We thank you all for coming to this special event in the life of our court. And let me put you all at ease, although it seems like you're already pretty much at ease. Um, this is a ceremonial session of the court. Please take that as permission to applaud as you see fit, stand when you wish, and take pictures to record this special day in the life of Justice Grosshands and in the history of our court. The reason we gather for an investiture is for the formal presentation of the new justice's credentials to the Chief Justice. The ceremonial transfer of credentials is the moment when the appointment authority of the state's executive is ceremonially recognized by handing off the official papers to the Supreme Court. Today we will hear remarks from Governor Ron DeSantis followed by Lieutenant Governor uh, uh, Nunez uh, presenting the credentials to the court. It is now my great honor to introduce the remarks of Governor DeSantis. After we uh, see and hear those remarks, Lieutenant, the Lieutenant Governor will add some remarks of her own, and I ask her to approach me here at the bench once she's done that for the presentation of credentials. Hello, I'm Governor Ron DeSantis, and I want to congratulate Justice Jamie Grosshands on her investiture to the Florida Supreme Court. I apologize for not being able to attend in person, but I'm accompanying my wife to her breast cancer treatment. Congrats to Josh and the kids, Avery, Jack, and Alice. You should be proud. Justice Grosshands is no stranger to Florida's courts, 
having served on the 9th Judicial Circuit in Orange County and on the 5th District Court of Appeal since 2018. Justice Grosshands understands that the role of the judiciary is to interpret and apply the law as written, not to legislate from the bench. She understands what Alexander Hamilton said, that the courts of law have neither force nor will, but merely judgment. She also has displayed the courage of her convictions, sometimes making the rulings that are the right rulings, that are the rulings that the Constitution commands or that the law commands, aren't always the most popular, and yet she's shown the ability and the fortitude to do what is right. I congratulate her on her elevation to the Florida Supreme Court, and I know she will serve with distinction for many years to come. God bless you all. Good afternoon. What a distinct privilege to be here with you all, Chief Justice, Justices, elected officials, Justice Grosshands, your family. It is truly an honor for me to be here. And on behalf of Governor DeSantis, we express our most sincere appreciation for what you mean to our state and what you'll mean to the Supreme Court. On September 14th, 2020, as you heard, Governor DeSantis appointed Justice Grosshands to the Florida Supreme Court because of her unparalleled legal career, because of her vast experience, and more importantly, as Governor DeSantis mentioned, her proven commitment to upholding the law. She is indeed a valuable addition to the Florida Supreme Court, and we are confident that she will continue to uphold the values of our founding fathers and their vision of the judiciary and its proper role in our system of government. Again, on behalf of Governor DeSantis, it is an honor to present the ceremonial transfer of credentials. My prayer for you, Justice Grosshands, is that just as Solomon asked God for wisdom, that he granted to you abundantly. Governor DeSantis and I know that Justice Grosshands, you will be faithful to the U.S. Constitution, the Florida Constitution, and our laws. Once again, congratulations to you and your entire family. May God bless you and give you strength and wisdom. We thank the governor and the lieutenant governor for your role in today's ceremony. The court is now very pleased to recognize Mr. Michael Tanner, president of the Florida Bar, for a presentation. Please, the court, justice, members of the court, distinguished guests, colleagues, and friends, and on behalf of the 110,000 members of the Florida Bar, I congratulate you on journey here from Brookhaven, Mississippi, all the way to us here as our newest justice on the court, and to being now one of our most uh, distinguished public servants here in the state of Florida. Our citizens will now look to you as one of the top leaders in our state, and uh, you and your colleagues on the court will set the standard for all of us in our profession to live up to, and it's a great weight that that responsibility is. And in recognition of that, our bar has a long tradition of presenting to new justices uh, on the occasion of the investiture a holy book in her or his faith to use to take the oath of office, which you're going to take in a moment. And I have here a Bible to give you for that purpose. But I want to say that um, we give this to you in the hope that it will serve you in two other very important ways. The first is to be a reminder daily of the oath you're about to take. Uh, and the other is to be a constant source, an ongoing source of encouragement uh, and inspiration and strength to you, as it's been for so many other leaders for so many years. Uh, and there are perhaps no better words 
of strength and encouragement uh, for a person in a position of high responsibility, such as yourself, uh, than these words in the fourth chapter of Proverbs, where the writer is expressing God's commitment to strengthen and support the faithful by declaring that I will guide you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. And when you walk, your steps will not be hampered. And when you run, you will not stumble. Justice Gross Hands, may this Bible give you encouragement and inspiration and strength for many, many years to come on this court. And so now it's with great affection and respect for your service uh, that I present this to you on behalf of the 110,000 members of our bar. Uh, and I ask that you, um, God bless you and your family, and God bless this court, and God bless the United States of America and the state of Florida, and best wishes to you. Thank you, President Tanner. The court is now pleased to recognize Mr. Charbel Barakat to go to the podium and give remarks. Mr. Chief Justice, thank you and may it please the court. Uh, honorable justices, distinguished representatives of all three branches of our state government and family and friends. What an honor it is for me today to speak on behalf of my dear friend, Justice Jamie Grosshands, on the occasion of her formal investiture as a member of the Supreme Court. Uh, given the significance of the occasion and the formality of the surroundings, Jamie asked me to keep this brief, but not too brief, <laughs> and to be funny, but not too funny. Uh, thankfully, for those that know me, not too brief and not too funny are right in my wheelhouse. <laughs> in the 10 years or so that I've known Jamie and her husband Josh, or at least in the 10 years that I've known that I've known them, but we'll come back to that, she's been a friend, a mentor, a counselor, and a confidant, and I cannot think of a better person to sit on this Supreme Court. My experience is hardly unique, and I stand here today in the place of countless others, many of whom are filling the courtroom today, who could share similar stories about the meaningful impact she's had on their lives, both personally and professionally. I'm proud to speak on their behalf. But though we're here to honor Jamie, it's also important to recognize Governor DeSantis and the distinguished members of the Supreme Court JNC, who in their wisdom saw fit to nominate and appoint Justice Grosshands. Yes, even Jesse and Harut. Governor, thank you for your counsel and your counselors for having the, co the courage to select a woman who has dedicated her life to serving as a disciple of and a missionary for the rule of law, the Constitution, and the divine law that inspires and supports them both. Members of the Supreme Court JNC, thank you for the countless hours you've dedicated to identifying, interviewing, vetting, and nominating some of the finest jurists in the entire union. The state of Florida is a better place today, and our legal institutions are stronger than ever thanks to you. This is also a momentous day for the Grosshands family. Josh, for a long time now, I've known you to be a tireless advocate, a wise consigliere, both in peacetime and war a good man, a patient and supportive husband and father, and a selfless friend. I'm proud and blessed to know you, and this celebration is yours, too. Tim, Carol, and the entire Gross Hands family, thank you for building the strong community of faith, family, and friends that has been the foundation of support in Josh and Jamie's lives. To Jamie's children, Avery, Jack, and Alice, I think your mother would agree that for all of her professional accomplishments, you three are her greatest achievements and her greatest blessings. To Jamie's parents, Jack and Shirley Rutland, Jamie has spoken often of the gifts you've gave her, the gifts of high expectations and uh, in character and in academics uh, and unconditional love and sacrifice. She's proud of inheriting Shirley's organizational and scheduling abilities and Jack's love of football, even if not the same love of Mississippi State. And maybe a little, maybe a little, 
of his stubbornness too, just a little. Uh, she also speaks of the gift of growing up at home, close to her grandparents, Jack and Evelyn, who were giants in her eyes, and also her biggest cheerleaders. To Jack, Shirley, the entire Rutland family, including cousin Robbie for speaking with me, and the good people of Brookhaven, Mississippi, including the Moonies, uh, thank you for giving Jamie an idyllic place to grow up and a big family to be part of. Thank you for your example of faith and of service to your country and to your neighbors. Jamie likes to say you are First Amendment people and maybe also Second Amendment people. <laughs> so thank you for instilling in her a love of God, family, and country that remains the core of who she is. Thank you all for your sacrifices and for sharing your wife, your mother, your daughter with the people of this state. Now on to the guest of honor. I was fortunate to meet Jamie early in our legal careers uh, through her husband, Josh. If the first thing Josh and I bonded over was our mutual appreciation for world-class barbecue, the second thing was how we both tremendously outkicked our coverage in the wife department. <laughs> uh, my wife, Dyra, and Jamie bonded equally quickly over, among other things, the challenges of running small businesses, balancing demanding professions with their responsibilities as wives and mothers, and as evidenced by their spouses, a mutual appreciation for a good fixer-upper. We became very fast friends, and Jamie and Josh, in a way, became the big brother and sister each of us never had, guiding us first as newlyweds and then as new parents. I am lucky that our kids are a bit younger than the Gross Hands' wonderful children. It's given me and Dyra the opportunity on many occasions to call Jamie and Josh for advice and a helping hand. Jamie is the kind of friend who would take time away from her own family to drive down I-4, coach two nervous first-time expectant parents through the aisles at Babies R Us, and help them pick just the right Consumer Reports approved car seat and stroller. We have always counted on Jamie for her thoughtful counsel, focused attention, and her steady encouragement that whatever we were going through, God had a plan, and that it was going to be all right. Now, as we got to know each other, uh, we came to find out that our history went back much farther uh, to one faithful day, fateful day in the nation's capital in the summer of 2004. Picture it, if you will. The Bush re-election campaign was in full swing, while John Kerry enjoyed windsurfing off the coast of Nantucket. Let's Get It Started by the legendary Black Eyed Peas was playing on your iPod, probably. Down at 1 First Street, Justice Kennedy was still busy pondering the sweet mystery of life. And The Apprentice had just wrapped up its successful first season on NBC, settling Donald Trump in what would, into what would surely be a comfortable, well-deserved, and quiet semi-retirement. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, that summer, uh, Jamie and Josh both found themselves in Washington and ended up at the law students' social event of the season, the annual Federalist Society cookout at Ted Olson's house. This place had everything. At barbecue, cold beer, country music, Alex P. Keaton lookalikes, and an unlimited supply of pocket constitutions. Everything. Jamie, Jamie was wearing her favorite pink pants that day and got to fulfill her wish of shaking hands with Justice Clarence Thomas. Josh and Jamie, as it happens, came to the party that day separately, but got to talking, and the next day Josh got her phone number. Many good things followed. Well, years later, as we're getting to know each other, and they tell me their origin story, a light bulb goes off. I was in D.C. that summer, too, and, it, and I was at that party. Unlike Jamie and Josh, I didn't meet my soulmate that day, but I seem to recall chatting with a whirlwind of a woman in pink pants, and I'm pretty sure the very nice elderly gentleman who politely passed me the gray poupon was none other than Judge Robert Bork. So not a day I would easily forget. Anyway, as we start to connect these dots, Jamie pulls out her phone and shows me a picture of her and Josh at that party. And as I look closely, I recognize a familiar face. Sure enough, unbeknownst to all of us at the time, it's our friend Jesse Panuccio, looming in the background of this photo, giving his symbolic blessing 
to this union like some kind of Federalist holy man. <laughs> Most people would call the juncture of these, all these intertwining strings of their lives next two decades a funny coincidence and not think much more about it. But Jamie and Josh are not coincidence people. Suffice it to say that the Lord does work indeed in mysterious ways. As an aside, uh, there are hardcore legal nerd bona fides, and then there's first exchanging phone numbers with your future husband after partying all day with Clarence Thomas, Robert Bork, and Jesse Panuccio. Top that, ACB. So with nearly a decade of friendship behind us, I can, without reservation, reassure the people of Florida that with Jamie Grow's hands, you've got a justice that loves her God, her family, her country and state, and the rule of law itself. She is a devoted wife and mother, a faithful, faithful and diligent leader of her church and community, and the kind of friend that others turn to for her patience, wise advice, and good humor. I can attest to the fact that Jamie's life is defined by a dedication to servant leadership. Whether it's her time in the Orange County State Attorney's Office, as the founder of a successful family and criminal law office in Winter Garden, as an adjunct professor at Valencia College, or as a guardian ad litem, her professional life has always been about taking on the tough challenges, standing up for average Floridians in the most difficult times, and first and foremost, to leave her clients better off than they were before. And as someone who spent hours wandering the shelves of South Tampa antique shops with her, let me tell you, if there's something else that Jamie really loves, it's books. The more the merrier, the older the better. When I asked her what most pleasantly surprised her about serving on the Supreme Court, she said, my colleagues and staff, the litigants and the work have been a dream come true, but I expected that. What I didn't expect was the rare book room. <laughs> For those that don't know, uh, the rare book room of the Supreme Court's library holds some of the oldest, most significant legal documents in our state's history, uh, including a Spanish legal text printed in 1597. They might as well rename it Jamie's Happy Place. <laughs> I hear that the, archive, the archivist even looks like the most interesting man in the world from the Dos Equis commercials. And it has dictionaries. So many dictionaries. All of the dictionaries. They say over the last dozen years or so, they've all gotten a lot more use. Of course, as cool as an old Spanish land grant or a Noah Webster first edition may be, Jamie, Jamie equally loves a story well told, and no work of fiction is closer to her heart, her heart than her prized special edition of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Now, the pointy-headed intellectuals out there might dismiss Tolkien's tales as just another overwrought fantasy about elves, dwarves, and dragons. But a true fan like Jamie can tell you it's a saga centered around the defense of a faithful, traditional civilization beset upon by enemies both foreign and domestic, a stark warning about the corruptive influence of absolute power, and a tale of the triumph of courage through humble, loyal service over the arrogant desire for glory. All things considered, maybe we could use a few more Lord of the Rings fans on the bench. While I primarily come before you to share some insights into Jamie's personal character, I did once have the good fortune to witness her in action on the bench at an unexpected moment of great tension and stress that I think gives some insight into the kind of jurist she is. The events of that fateful day might have been pulled from a story by John Grisham, or as he's now known in these parts, the University of Mississippi School of Law's second most distinguished graduate. <laughs> a few years ago when Jamie was on the Orange County Court, I remember walking into the courtroom just as I, I went back into session after a lunch break, when it was quickly discovered that one of the jurors was nowhere to be found. You could hear everyone in the courtroom start to murmur, and the questions started coming. We really have a runaway juror? Could something terrible have happened? Would there be a mistrial? Well, this was the last day of a five-day high-profile trial involving charges against a special law enforcement unit. Prosecutors had to be brought in from a neighboring county at great cost of time and trouble. To start over again would mean justice even further delayed. Some might have cracked under such circumstances, and made a hasty or unwise ruling, but not Jamie. As she dispatched the bailiff to track down the missing juror and began considering alternatives in the event of his disappearance, you could start to see uh, the sense of calm in the courtroom being restored. 
Thankfully, the juror was found having fallen asleep in his car after having worked an overnight shift at his day job. While some judges might have chastised the missing juror, Jamie showed great compassion for the man's circumstances. It turns out he was very eager to do his civic duty, even if it meant going without sleep. And then they got right back to business. During the course of that day, she made several tough but right calls, and ultimately justice was served. I always knew that her intelligence, preparedness, and fair-mindedness would serve her well as a judge. But that day I saw firsthand that Jamie possessed the coolness under pressure that distinguishes the truly great jurists. Perhaps for this reason, among many others, maybe we should have more mothers of three on the bench too. In sum, Justice Grosshands is a woman of faith, a daughter who has lived every parent's dream, who has excelled in every aspect of professional life, a dedicated wife and mother, and a true friend. Today, our state is fortunate to call Jamie Grosshands the 91st Justice of the Supreme Court of Florida. On behalf of Daira and our family, on behalf of your friends and family here in this courtroom and watching back home, we love you, Jamie, uh, and wish you the very best in continuing to serve the people of our state. God bless you, God bless the state of Florida, and God bless this honorable court. Thank you. Thank you. I'm now pleased to call upon the Honorable Meredith Sasso, a judge of the Fifth District Court of Appeal to approach the podium for remarks. Chief Justice, Justices, honored guests, it is such a privilege to be here today to introduce the newest justice of the Florida Supreme Court, Jamie Grosshands. She is only the fifth woman in the history of this court to have served the court in this capacity. And that fact alone should really tell you how exceptional Jamie is. But Jamie did tell me I could speak for at least like eight to nine minutes, so I'm gonna keep going. I won't pick on Jesse as much. Uh, but I, while I've had the opportunity to serve professionally with Jamie, the first gross hands I actually got to serve with was Josh. And I remember one day, it was after a long day on the, the commission that we were serving on, we had had a kind of heated discussion and he turns to me and. He says, you know, you should really get to know my wife. Y'all would really hit it off. And it turns out he was 100% correct. And uh, through that providential meeting, got one of my dearest friends and one of my most valued professional colleagues. And as I've gotten to know her through this unique lens of the professional and the, the friend side, um, what's really stood out to me about Jamie is why she does what she does, what motivates her. And so that's what I wanted to talk about today. I'm gonna to help y'all understand a little bit more about why. And to do that, we're gonna go back to Brookhaven. Uh, Jamie grew up with, as you know, the, her wonderful family and friends in Brookhaven doing what Southern people do, going to funerals and picnics and you know weddings. A lot of funerals, been there, done that. Um, and while you might, you might expect you know, to find lots of opportunities for delicious potlucks in Brookhaven, you might not expect to find your next floor Supreme Court justice. See, growing up, Jamie had met a bunch of attorneys, but she had never met a female attorney. She had certainly never met a female judge. Uh, she had never even met a lawyer who litigates. But Jamie was always the type of person who, as one of her friends described, wanted to make sure the world wor works the way it should. And so she found her opportunities, even in Brookhaven, to engage, as Dr. Mooney said. Never with her parents, of course. A good Southern girl would never debate with her parents. But she found her opportunities. And, and as Dr. Mooney described, um, one of those opportunities came when she was working with him in her first job. And so they were getting into this exchange. I think it was a relatively insignificant topic at the time, but something that Jamie wouldn't necessarily let go. And uh, he said, you know what, you're a little spunky. Jamie's like, yeah, I, I can be spunky, I'm spunky. So, <laughs> so she, she thought about that, and as you know, spunky Jamie went on with her life, um, she paused one day and thought about what she, was, what she was passionate about and how she might best accomplish that and realized that she probably needed to go to law school. That was probably the right path. Now, unfortunately for spunky Jamie, the, the LSAT, the law school admissions test, was only two weeks away, and she was going to have to apply to schools before she even got her results back. 
but it worked out, um, and she ended up getting accepted to the only school that matters to a girl from Brookhaven, Mississippi. That's the University of Mississippi. So Jamie goes to Ole Miss, and uh, in many ways, her experience at Ole Miss is what you would expect from a Florida Supreme Court justice. She excels academically. She gets accepted for prestigious Washington, D.C. internships. She's on trial team. She's on moot court. She's on a journal. Um, and because Jamie's always just a tad bit extra, and we mean that in the most endearing way possible, she also edited the school's yearbook because she likes creating memories for people. Uh, and, and as Charbel described, law school is also where she met her other love, Josh. And now, after that faithful picnic, they started up this long-distance relationship. And while most early courtships are characterized by romantic dinners, long walks on the beach, those sorts of things, not Josh and Jamie, they're different. So and on an early trip to the University of Mississippi, they spent half the day watching a football game and the other half the day debating the 17th Amendment. Yes. Because Jamie is an expert in hospitality, after all. So although Jamie had had her sights set on Washington, D.C., when push came to shove and it came time for law school graduation, she followed her love and came down to Winter Garden, started working at the state attorney's office before opening her own firm, representing, representing clients on the other side of the B, so among others, criminal defendants, and then joining the judiciary. Now, the fact that she joined the judiciary is somewhat unexpected, too. Jamie had never set out to be a judge. She didn't set out to be a judge in Brookhaven or in law school or even really on early on in her career. But if you talk to her friends and you talk to the people that know her best, of course she was going to be a judge. And why wouldn't she? Jamie loves people. You talk to her friends, it's evident in her friendships and her professional life and her commitment to the community. And so while Jamie's in law school and she's doing all these things, she also has time to develop this really motley group of friends that has a lot in common in their love for each other, but not a lot in common when it comes to their worldview necessarily. So they're constantly getting in debates. But they said no matter what, even in law school, no matter what the topic and how he did it got, she always listened intently, respond calmly, and never held a grudge. Now, in preparing for today, I had the opportunity to speak to a lot of Jamie's friends. And when you talk to them, everybody has a similar story. Jamie's the reason. She's the reason I live in Florida. I heard she's the reason I have my job. She's the reason I met my spouse. I know I have my own Jamie's the reason story. And it's because Jamie is the best friend. She is the type of friend that knows when you need somebody to walk arm in arm with you into a hostile room. She knows when you need somebody to walk behind you and give you a little nudge, and she knows when you need somebody to plow down a path that you can walk through. But I don't want any of this talk about how nice Jamie is to be confused. All these friends that tell you how kind she is will be the first to tell you that she's always known exactly who she is, and she is not going to apologize for it. There is a reason, after all, that women from the South are referred to as still magnolias and not delicate flowers. And I do have some stories on this topic that would help exemplify it. Unfortunately, they are not fit for public consumption. But <laughs> suffice it to say, heard a censor published in the Southern Reporter. You can see me after for the citations. <laughs> but e even in these, in these very heated professional situations, I can attest that there is not a moment when Jamie has ever forgot her obligation to be charitable in debate. The other aspect that I've seen Jamie's love for people come out is in her love for her judicial philosophy. And if you know Jamie, you know she loves her philosophy. I know there are several people in this room who have been privy to a, a Jamie-fueled late-night debate over some obscure philosophical issue, usually over Taco Bell. May the Mexican pizza rest in peace. But what stands out to me, again, about Jamie and her philosophy is why. She believes that everybody that comes into this courtroom, everybody goes in any courtroom, should get equal justice under the law and fair treatment, not because no one's special, as some people say, but because everyone's special. Everyone is made in the image of their creator. Everyone is somebody's baby. And she is committed to the Constitution, not because she's a history buff or she really likes old things. It's because she knows that despite its imperfection, 
our structure of government is the best way to ensure human flourishing and to honor the worth and dignity of every person. I have no doubt that sooner rather than later, there's going to be some ambitious law student out there who goes and looks at Jamie's life and studies it and tries to recreate it and see how they can do it. And a lot of what they're going to find is going to be unique. She's one of the few justices who had their own small law firm. She's one of the few justices who got their start on county court. But what they're going to find, if they really look, is what's exceptional about her. And that's that she never set out to be a Supreme Court justice. This is not the fulfillment of some grand scheme. What Jamie did was she thought about what was important to her, and she let that lead her. And so my advice to these ambitious law students would be, if you want to be like Justice Gross Hands, first figure out what you believe in, and then pursue what you're passionate about, and pursue it with integrity. And if you do that, just like Justice Gross Hands, you'll end up precisely where you were called to be. So if you could all join me again in congratulating our 91st Justice of the Florida Supreme Court on this episode. Thank you, Judge Sasso. The time now has come for the high point of today's investiture. At this time, the Honorable Alan Lawson, a justice of this court, will administer the oath of office at the podium. He will be joined there by the immediate family of Justice Grosshands. And of course, Justice Grosshands. Uh, the enrobing will then be performed in the well by Justice Grosshands' husband, Mr. Joshua Grosshands, accompanied by their children. Thank you, Mr. Chief Justice and esteemed colleagues. Today, it is my great honor and privilege to administer the oath of office to this court's newest member. And not just its newest member, but its newest and youngest, and most graceful, and most considerate, most charming, most elegant, an exceptional jurist, a dedicated student of the law, a devoted wife, mother, daughter, and true and faithful friend to many, giving her best daily in all of these diverse endeavors, my valued colleague and friend, Jamie Rutland Grosshand. Chief, two years ago before you swore in Justice Muniz, you told us that administering that oath was one of the greatest privileges you've had as a judge. Our former colleague and friend, Judge Luck, echoed that sentiment last month before he administered the oath to Justice Coriel, declaring that day and that event as one of the best and most meaningful things he had done or would ever do as a judge. Jamie, I am forever grateful for the opportunity to administer your oath of office, for it truly is and will always be one of the greatest privileges that I will ever enjoy as a judge. Thank you. On September 17, 1787, George Washington called to order delegates of our nation's constitutional convention for that convention's final meeting, the signing of the Constitution. This nation under that Constitution and its amendments has produced more freedom and more prosperity for more people than any other in the history of the world. A Constitution by the people, for the people, ratified for the express purposes of establishing justice and securing the blessings of liberty for generations to come. And at its heart, at its very core stands a foundational belief that the blessings of liberty could be secured for a people and their posterity because there were and would continue to be Americans who could be trusted to simply keep their word. To take an oath and then to faithfully and courageously live out that oath in service of their fellow citizens. After the Constitution declares that it will be the supreme call, law of the land and that the people themselves retained the exclusive power to amend the Constitution if they wanted it changed 
or updated to reflect current ideals or values. It then declares that every legislator, all executive, all judicial officers, both of the United States and of every single state, quote, shall be bound by oath or affirmation to support this Constitution. In an age where living a good life meant cultivating courage, character, integrity, and virtue, it was rightly assumed that those who took a solemn oath to support and follow the Constitution would then simply live out that oath with the courage, character, integrity, and virtue that they had spent their lives developing. And that's why we gather here today to declare that what was true in 1787 is no less true today. That our Constitution is alive and is well because it is being lived out right now as we gather to administer the oath of office to the great state of Florida's 91st justice. To declare that the faith placed in us 234 years ago by those who fought and bled for our freedom was indeed well placed, at least today and at least here. I know Jamie well, and I know that she has committed herself to cultivating courage of character, personal integrity, and virtue. That she is fully prepared to take this solemn oath before you and God as a promise and as a cherished marker reminding all of the commitment that she intends to live out for the remainder of her tenure on this court. May that tenure be long. I know that it will be distinguished. Josh, Avery, Jack, Alice, will you please join me in the well for the administration of the oath? Marshall will now escort Justice Grosshands to our bench. Please be seated. Now, we have come to the time when we will hear from the focus of our attention today. Justice Grosshands, will you please do us the honor of giving your response? I'm going to have this ready. 
Thank you, Chief Justice and my colleagues. It is um, a remarkable day uh, to be here with you all today. Once upon a time, there was a young girl in Brookhaven, Mississippi. She spent a lot of time at the library. Her best friends were Agatha Christie and J.R.R. Tolkien. Frankly, it was kind of a one-sided relationship. But what she learned is the magic of a good story, how each chapter weaves together, and how each character's role becomes clear, and how the surprises are often far better than even the best laid plans. There's another thing about a really good story. They are rarely just about one person. In fact, it is the cast of characters that make the adventures so memorable. We have Watson, Samwise Ganjee, Diana Spencer, Mr. Darcy, and Hermione Granger, all so vital to a plot that without them, the story would never have unfolded. After all, there are no coincidences in a beautifully written book. Everyone plays their part in bringing the story home. Psalm 139 says that all of our days were written before even one came to pass. Decisions made before I was even born are part of my story. <clears throat> Every person that has invested in my life has prepared me for this role, and each chapter has brought me to this place. <clears throat> the best things about investitures, though, are that those characters in your story who may have appeared decades apart end up in one place. Looking around this room, I cannot help but see the hand of the great author at work. I am eternally grateful for my beautiful parents who instilled in me a sense of purpose, responsibility, and a lifelong love of learning. They continually sacrificed for me in both the big and the small ways, and they still do. I am grateful for four amazing grandparents watching from heaven who, as good grandparents do, firmly believed that I could do anything if I set my mind to it. I am especially thankful for my grandfather, Jack Rutland Sr., whose quiet demeanor often concealed his extraordinary stories of a life well-lived. <clears throat> he was committed to God, family, country, and good barbecue, exactly in that order. <laughs> and he passed that sense of duty and honor and love of barbecue to the entire Rutland family, each of whom I treasure and am proud to carry that name. I am also grateful for the family I married into. Each of them is personally invested in my life. I've inherited two parents-in-law, four sisters, three brothers, and objectively the most beautiful nieces and nephews in the world. It's amazing to have a family this big who truly loves spending time together and being an active part of each other's lives. Probably all started from that bond that forms when you really have to explain that your name is actually Gross Hands. <laughs> Although I'm very proud to carry that name now, too. I am grateful when I look back on my own three years of law school, truly life-changing years, where I was pushed to critical thinking and challenged to articulate what I believed in an atmosphere of respect and civility and I learned the value of relationships with those who would stand by me long after the tests were completed. <clears throat> they have faithfully cheered me on for years, a few even finding their way to Tallahassee today because friendships formed in the Grove last forever. Speaking of friendships, I would certainly not be here but for my remarkable friends. In fact, friends seems almost an insufficient way to describe them. These are the men and the women who have encouraged me as an individual, as a young woman, as a wife, as a parent, always cheering for my career. We have done life together, some for 30 years and some for just the past few months. Uh, but they have all been instrumental to my story. They have given me time when they had none to give. They have quite literally sung to me when the days were hard. They have driven me to interviews so I would not have to park. They have prayed, they have cheered. These men and women show up through great times of heartache and times of overwhelming joy, 
and have continually stood beside me and my family, and I am overwhelmed by their generosity of spirit. I am thankful for the community of lawyers in this state who have mentored and challenged. You have pushed, you have made me better. You answered questions about equitable distribution and entrapment. <clears throat> you spent time debating stare decisis and preservation. You sat in restaurant booths for ages, dreaming about the future. You told me the long hours spent preparing for interviews was not in vain. You cheered me on every step of this journey, and you laid your reputation on the line to vouch for me. I sit here today because of your efforts and encouragement. I am grateful to all the judges in my life for your encouragement and support. You have chosen a very difficult career, sacrificing many things to wear the robe, and I am continually amazed of the remarkable job you do serving our state. I am particularly thankful for the judges of the Ninth Circuit and the Fifth District Court of Appeal, the example you set to a young lawyer, the mentorship you gave to a new judge, the spirited discussions you have provided when we disagreed, your commitment to the rule of law, and the example of service to your community has guided me for years. I promise I will represent you well on this court. Thank you to my chambers, both those with me now and those who have worked with me in the past. Your daily commitment to your work allows me to be the best that I can be in this role. I am grateful to Governor DeSantis for placing his trust in me to perform the duties of this office. I am thankful for now Senator Scott for starting my judicial career with my first two judicial appointments. Thank you to the Supreme Court Judicial Nominating Commission for placing your trust in me to serve the state in this role. To my colleagues on this court, you have welcomed me into this role with professionalism, respect, and friendship. I am honored to sit with you on this bench and serve our state together. I know I'm gonna need it for this next part. <clears throat> to my three beautiful children, you are strong, independent, amazing individuals. I am so blessed that God chose me to be your mom. I am so proud of you. Thank you for giving me up sometimes so that I could do this job. I know it means I miss some really cool things that you are doing, but you are so generous to understand that sometimes sacrifice is part of life. And I love you to the moon and back. And finally, see, I can't look at him for this section. I need to start this way. <laughs> Just don't look. And finally, to that boy who stole my heart more than 15 years ago, you have always believed <laughs> that I could do this even before I dreamed it. You supported, counseled, encouraged, laughed, challenged, and dreamed with me. And the best part is that you don't just do it for me. It's part of who you are. Countless people in this room would say, Joshua Gross Hands has had a profound impact on my life. Thank you for not letting me doubt. Thank you for talking me out of that Pottery Barn sales position. <laughs> <laughs> True story. Uh, when I thought that being a lawyer was too hard, thank you for sacrificing in so many ways for me to have this moment. Thank you for loving me through the darkest times as well as the joyful ones. I am so excited that we share this day together. While the founders of our country certainly did not agree on everything, they did understand the vital importance of separate but equal branches of government. Adherence to the structural constitution and separation of power spelled out in both the state and federal constitution is necessary to protect our individual liberties and personal freedoms. I am proud to be part of Florida's story as the fifth woman to sit on this court. I promise to exercise judgment, never force or will, to uphold the rule of law fairly and equally as I serve the people of this amazing state. Thank you all for being here.
Thank you, Justice Grosshands. Uh, we are all honored to be on the bench with you here. It's now my privilege to recognize John Zarnetsky, Dean of the Ave Maria School of Law, and I am informed Justice Grosshands' favorite professor at the Ole Miss School of Law to offer the benediction. Thank you, Mr. Chief Justice, distinguished members of the court, Madam Lieutenant Governor, distinguished guests, family, and friends. On a personal note, I must take this opportunity to say there is no greater happiness for an educator than to see his or her student exceed him in life. And Ms. Rutland, <laughs> of happy school day memories. <laughs> and now, Justice Jamie Grosshands of this distinguished court, today is a most joyful day indeed for me. Now, if you will, let us pray. In the words of the psalmist, teach me, Lord, the way of your decrees, that I may follow it to the end. Give me understanding so that I may keep your law and obey it with all my heart. Direct me in the path of your commands, for there I find delight. Turn my heart toward your statutes and not toward selfish gains. O Lord, our God, you are the source of truth, goodness, and wisdom. You are the merciful one and the just judge. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of thy throne. O God, we thank you for our great nation, for our beloved state of Florida, and for our system of justice. We are mindful of our founders who established the Constitution and for those who are called to defend it in federal and state courts. We humble ourselves before you and ask now for your special blessing upon the Honorable Supreme Court of Florida, upon its justices, and especially upon our newly vested justice, the Honorable Jamie Grosshands. Amen. Thank you, uh, Dean Zarnetsky. Before we end this ceremonial session, I want to make an announcement. We ask everyone to join Justice Grosshands and her family at a reception at the Governor's Club on Adams Street. This reception is sponsored by the Florida Supreme Court Historical Society and the Orange County Bar Association. Finally, I thank all of you and all of the people you stand in for with your attendance here today. Our most important purpose is to serve the people who come to court seeking justice and resolution of disputes. Thank you for being with us here today. We are honored you joined us here on this very important day in the life of Justice Grosshands and in the history of this court. This session of the Florida Supreme Court is now adjourned. All right. <laughs>